X45 is a bodyweight workout with three main goals. We are going to master the bodyweight training basics. We are going to boost mobility metabolism and we're gonna build next level stamina and endurance. Now you're done in 20 minutes, but first, Uncle Baby Biscuits got to show you what to do. Sumo Squat Shiko Mobility Warm Up Flow. Three minutes total. You can go 90 seconds heels elevated, 90 seconds floor. If you don't have a slam board, you can go on the floor the whole way or stay in the heel elevated slam board option the whole way. It's up to you. But what we're doing here is, and sumo wrestlers will do at least a couple hundred reps of these daily, if not up to a thousand in serious training modes to build insane squat mobility and leg strength. Really open up the hips and the pelvic girdle here. So I squat down and do a little bit of a pulse here. And then I'm going to transfer my weight to one side, lift a leg, come up here, all right? And I'm just gonna keep switching sides as I do it. Lift it up all the way to the side. Really opens up. Big stretch in the adductors. Stay tall. A little harder to balance too on the heels elevated option because it actually pushes the weight forward onto the toes. But when I lift, I'm trying to lift this leg out to the side and really feel the weight shift here. Now, much more stable on the floor. I can't get down as low without the heel elevated option, but I can still work it here. And much easier to balance as I do it. Shifting down, staying tall, a little bit of bounce, warm up those knees. Whoa. See, a lot of balance and coordination. You can pause and stick and go right back into it. So, great way to warm it up. And again, I, I like adding this and daily mobility, off day recovery as well. So this is another wheel workout, meaning there's a hub, a main move you start with and keep coming back to and then spokes or accessory movements you bounce between our hub is always gonna be a particular heels elevated lunge plus pulsing squat variation. But what I'm gonna allow you to do is switch it up from round to round to get a little more variety. So let me show you the three main options you would do two times total through for the six hubs of this workout. So the first one is, and again, if you don't have the slant board, just do the exact same movement feet flat on floor, but the heels elevated option is gonna get us more lower quad stress, it'll help really bulletproof the knees, and we just can get better angles, stay more upright in the trunk, and uh, just get more motion through the hip and the knee. So it's just, it's the best option, so that's why we're showing it. We're gonna stay with a closer stance here the whole way to allow us to do the lunging actions and just work our closer stance squat pattern, benefiting from the heels elevated options. Here's what it looks like. I'm gonna do a reverse lunge, Stay tall up top. Switch sides. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squat down with both legs to a point where I can still really stay tall up top. And then I'm gonna do some pulsing. Exhale up, inhale down. And then I'm gonna go right back into my reverse lunges again. The forward lunge version of this is same concept. I'm gonna step off the box. Inhale down. Exhale up. And then I do sink into my good close stance squat. And then repeat. The other option is the lateral, still heels elevated. What I'm gonna do is just step off to the side. Hips and shoulders square, land soft. All right, and then get that good squatter. Three to five pulses and then repeat the process. If you wanted to mix it up, you could do a lunge, pulsing squat, lunge other side, pulsing squat for all varieties if you want, or you just do left leg, right leg, pulsing squat. But we go reverse, forward, in lateral lunge. You can mix it up every round, come back and repeat that cycle one time through, or just pick one you want to work the entire time and have some fun with it. But I wanted to show you extra variety to make it more fun and more complete. Single leg down dog to clamshell ladder. You're seeing the same side the whole set. You'll come back through the next time you come to this and switch sides. Now, I'm gonna show a couple unique options with the slam boards here. You can do these with both hands and feet on the floor. You wanna get more wrist stretch. Elevate the fingers. If you have wrist problems, you can elevate the heel of the hand instead. In both cases, when we add the push-up, this is gonna extend the range of motion to get more out of the push-up too. Now, I'm showing a new option here. If you struggle on single leg down dogs, look at the slam board setup I have here. It's actually gonna make it more stable for you. You still get an amazing stretch. You just get a better angle 
especially if it's troublesome for you. But here's what it looks like. I'm going to get set up and I'm doing a push up, inhale down, exhale up. I'm gonna come back, drive that leg back, get into a nice big stretch, pushing the arms away. But then what I'm gonna do is add a clamshell, exhale up, inhale down, back to the push up. Inhale back again, get a stretch first. And now I'm doing two clamshells. Every time I come back to the clamshell here, it's like a little dog at a fire hydrant action. I'm gonna add a rep. So the next time I come back through, it's three reps. Now I can do this foot on the floor. I just wanted to show that option just to get a little more stability there. But here's what that third rep would look like. So push back and stretch, really reach it through. And then just great for the abductors and hip rotators. And uh, if you can't do the push up, just stop at plank. You can go slam board option or foot on floor. The foot on floor just will be uh, just more intense and the stretch is pretty significant, but at least the slant board can let you get into the movement right away. Multi-level single arm down dog. You'll see in the same arm the whole set, then switch sides the next time you come back to it here, right? Here's what it looks like if I'm going right side. So I'm going to do my big down dog. Inhale back, get a good stretch, try to flatten those heels. Come back through, okay. Then I'm going to transfer, inhale it down to my forearm, but then I'm gonna do a down dog from the forearm only and come back. <sighs> Exhale back up. And now if I wanted to make this more challenging, I can do a <sighs> arm stays totally straight. Scat push up first. Inhale it back, stretch it out, really push away. Come back here, do my transfer down. And now I can even add a scap really hard there. Push up there and come back. Now, if that's tough for you, obviously you can eliminate the scap push up portions, whether it be hand or forearm. Elevate on a stable box or bench your hands, okay? And just uh, do the best you can with it. Or if you, you can just eliminate coming to the floor on the forearm if you need to. But that's our progression, one side at a time, wider feet than uh, usual anytime you're on a single arm to get more uh, base with support and stability. The one arm, one leg, down dog. Super tough, okay? I'm gonna start showing a double slam board option that I found to make this more accessible, especially early on when you're doing this. I'll show a couple modifications as well. But here's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be, in this case, left arm, right leg, opposites. And then it becomes the next set, right arm, left leg. But I'm set up here where you can see the angles, right? So high side our way, and I'm gonna get my left arm on the far side, left of this slant board, right leg, far side there, okay? What I'm gonna do is first focusing on, and initially you can just have the hand ready to touch and assist if you need here. Harder would be here, but I get into a normal plank, then I'm gonna push back, really maximize the stretch, reach, inhale it back to return. Sorry, inhale back. Exhale forward, fight for that stability, okay? So I really like the slant board option because again, it just gives you more stability for that back toe. Now, you can not use the slant boards at all. And here's what it looks like in just a normal down dog position. So I'm locked in, I'm gonna get set, squared off. And the one thing to note too is it's a little bit harder to get that heel flat without the assistance of that slant board. Inhale it back, fight for stability. Poop, all right, come through. It's really tough. Now what I can do is I can go to kind of an archer position here. So get out to the side. So I'm still, in this case, right arm, left leg. Very hard to talk while doing these two, by the way. But I'm here and this is just assisting. But this will give me a little more stability. And again, I can go bent knee or just totally back leg reach. And I can come like that. So that's giving me just enough to keep my hips and shoulders square to prevent that either straight or back leg really push away. Super stretch here versus if I'm here the whole way, man, it is really hard. You gotta go super slow and you gotta fight, oops, the whole time for that stability, okay? You can see the challenge, but do the best you can. And by the way, if you need to, you can also just eliminate the down dog and just do an opposite arm leg plank 
And by the way, if you find this to be troublesome, like I am, I'm working both just the plank only and the down dog variation on my off days to strengthen that weakness. Two minute finisher, sumo speed, or speed sumo squat walk. We're gonna get down and we've been working this progression, but now what I'm gonna do is, while I'm trying to stay low here, get low, get ready, and then I'm gonna do a big smooth exhale as I quickly speed walk across. So, now I can stand up, turn, and go back. I can also, I'll show this other option here, so I'm doing my speed walk, get set, and then I can do a, basically a, a jump switch. And I can switch which direction I go. Make it more dynamic, explosive, the choice is yours, but we're switching directions, try to stay low, and by the way, we can start going a little bit slower and just ramp up the speed as we get into it, but then you'll start to fatigue and then you'll have to actually slow down a little bit too. So leg burn is crazy. Make sure you're not going so fast that it's causing you to get less of a squat and come up higher. So imagine staying in that tiny house. And by the way, I've got like this little picture target. One thing I'm gonna try to focus on doing is if I come up too high, I see my reflection, I can see my head. I don't wanna see my head. If you can see the frame there, I'm trying to stay below the frame the whole way. So. A target that you can kind of stay below can help you to maintain your form and technique. This might be one of the most challenging mobility workouts ever because the metabolic component is so high, so much strength, stability, and stamina demands as well, but you can take this anytime, anywhere, and again, we're building and building and building on all the things we've been drilling throughout the year. So if you got to this point, man, much respect. It is super tough, but you're staying in the game. You're done in 20 minutes. Make your post work report in the comment section below and have another great body weight workout. Go. Halfway.
rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway.
Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Go. 
go. Halfway. Rest. Go. Halfway. Rest. Halfway. Rest. Halfway. Rest.
halfway.